this video I'm going to show you how to build a direct drive equatorial platform like I build. Uh, it's pretty simple, um, but you do need access to a table saw and a metal lathe or maybe a local machine shop. Starting with the top view of the platform, uh, I draw an isosceles triangle uh, with the sides equal to the feet spacing on my ground board. And then on each of those points, which are the feet of the ground board, I draw a six inch circle because uh, six inches is about how much distance platform will move in an hour, usually. And so uh, that'll determine how wide to make the platform. Usually I just take this drawing and uh, scale it up to where the feet spacing equals uh, the ground platform that I'm working on. The profile of the front edge is pretty arbitrary. It can be curved, straight, it doesn't really matter. The, uh, the back edge for the south bearing um, has to be straight and has to be wide enough to uh, accommodate the cord length of the south bearing. So we may want to adjust that later uh, once we know the cord length of the south bearing. In addition to your latitude, you're going to need to know the weight of your telescope tube, the height of the telescope above ground, that is from the middle of the bearings to ground. You're going to need to know the weight of the rocker box by itself and the rocker box center of gravity. And that confuses a lot of people. But basically, you take your rocker box uh, by itself turn it on its side and balance it on something like a broomstick um, to where it just teeters. And the distance from the broomstick to the ground, which would now be on your, your left, is the height of the center of gravity of the rocker box. With this information, uh, we need to f calculate the center of gravity of the whole system. The telescope, rocker box, and platform all moving together has one center of gravity which has to be uh, on the virtual axis that we're going to uh, create with the platform. And here's a screenshot of the Excel program that I used to calculate the center of gravity uh, with the uh, formula. Basically plug in a value for the um, center of gravity and when the torque value is zero, uh, that's the right height. You only need to be within a tenth of an inch. Using CAD I draw two light blue lines coming down from the front and back of the platform and then a light blue construction line coming down from the center of our triangle which is where we draw our center of gravity uh, 11.6 inches high. Then we draw a uh, virtual polar axis. Next I draw a construction line coming down from the front of the triangle which is where our feet are and then I want to draw a perpendicular uh, line uh, from our polar axis so that the, we, we're going to construct the a north bearing around the area of the little cross there for the, where the cursor is. If you're using AC motors then I need to determine what radius to make the north bearing. And that's determined by the motor speed and the diameter of the drive shaft. And I like to use commonly available uh, stainless steel shafting from MasterCard or wherever. You want to use a, a drive shaft diameter somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch. So I have a little spreadsheet to calculate what the drive shaft should be based on the motor speed. And in this case I'm using a 4 RPH motor and I found that with a 14.96 inch radius north bearing uh, I can use a 5 16 uh, standard uh, stainless steel shaft and to come up with the right speed. I spaced the top platform three inches from the ground board and then I drew in the south bearing 
its radius doesn't really matter because it's not driven but it needs to be a little bit shorter than the north bearing also the uh, the sag on each of these curves uh, needs to be enough so that the bearing width is equal to or maybe slightly greater than the width of the platform uh, where it attaches okay so um, to make the north bearing um, I've already cut uh, a uh, the bevel on the edge of this uh, piece to the complementary angle of my latitude now I want to draw a um, well I've got a draw line drawn here which is the um, sag of the curve so I want to draw a radius of that I've got marked out here with a pin stick very simple uh, and then make sure that you know, the, the crest of the curve falls on the, that line and then just draw that out now I'm going to cut that out with a little bit extra and then go from there okay um, so now you see I've cut out my curve a little bit extra not real neat but it doesn't matter so on the back side um, I want to also mark the, the sag of the curve which is the same uh, a mark up there for the for there in the middle and then I want to tack on a thin piece of plywood on the back side which is going to be our pivot board <clears throat> using um, some real small brads <clears throat> all the way in so you can remove them easy now I'm ready to cut my radius I forgot to mention that um, we need to take our same radius stick and find, uh, I've already marked it here, uh, find the intersection of, well, just hold it on the edge and find the intersection out here, which is here. Um, that's not where we're going to place our pivot. We're going to put our, our end of our sag is right here, but the middle of the bearing is, is uh, halfway uh, farther, so I'm going to maybe about a half inch um, put the radius uh, that we want to go, go to there. And in, in my pivot point, will be from there and you see that radius is farther out so we want to have our pivot point this is where the two curves cross but our pivot point we want to be out farther would we'll be out here okay so uh, this is my setup for uh, grinding the bearings it's really pretty simple I've got a um, sanding desk is just a metal desk with uh, 10 inch uh, sandpaper on it and uh, uh, I bolted onto my bed at my table it's just a piece of oak and it's got um, it has a lag bolt in it that uh, clamps it to the table and threw it to another piece of wood and then I've got my uh, uh, hard nailed here. You want to you want to place it so that it it's right in the middle of, of the of the, um, um, of the face of the uh, uh, the wheel, and then just pound that in. That's your that's your pivot point. Um, 
it's really messy, so that's, I'm, I do this outside. It's dust will go everywhere, as you'll see. Let me show you. Now, to shorten, I'm starting out here, so I have a lot of material to take off. So, what I do is to shorten to, to move this into the wheel. I just tap it with my hammer, and that, it moves just a little bit and pushes it into the wheel. Okay, so I'm almost done here. You can see my uh, mark for the sag of the curve. We want the curve to come into there. Uh, but we, like I said, we want to be sure that you measure to the middle of the curve for your radius. So uh, this, this outside radius will be slightly different than the, than the, the radius at the middle of your bearing because it's actually a cone surface we're, we're doing. So there, I've kept, kept pushing it in, and now my curve is up to my mark. So the sag of this bearing is where it's supposed to be, at the right radius. And uh, just like it did the north bearing, I do the south bearing the same way. Uh, this time the sanding disc is perpendicular because you want a square face. And then you can just measure the radius directly to to your pivot point, much easier. That's all there is to it. Um. And I took the curve right up to my sag mark. <laughs> 